this video we're going to be looking at the Sony Betamax SL-C9UB. Uh, it's not an unboxing video, it's just it, it's actually in its original, if not slightly shabby box. Um, so let's have a look at it. Um, I have already un unboxed it previously. Um, let's have a look at the condition of it. Uh, instruction manual um, bought from eBay it was actually what attracted me to it was it it was really really tidy um, didn't have any of these scratches but unfortunately when they packed it they packed it with a plug like that and then just close the lid on it and it was like why do it <laughs> honestly why do it um, so, uh, yeah, it's got the original polystyrene, which I didn't expect. So, uh, yeah, let's get it out of the box and uh, see what we can do with it, see what's wrong. Okay, so here we go. Um, So, um, rather nice looking machine from the front, um, the mark there, otherwise not bad, flap is good, it's fairly unusual, the hinges break off uh, very easily, unless you're looking to 3D print those, and uh, yeah, apart from those scratches at the top, um, um, somebody putting a plug in <laughs> in the packaging it's good so uh, let's take the top off and have a look that screws look like new just a nice very slight mark a little dent in the side but too bad. Now apparently um, everything is good with the um, display on this. Um, I've seen pictures of it before I bought it and uh, yeah it was all good. So Have a look. So nice and tidy, and uh, all the metal components look good. The metal components, <laughs> all the cans look good. Um, as you can probably spot, it's. Um, problems with the front loading um, rod very common on these if they've got plastic cogs then yeah they're, they're, you can almost guarantee they're going to be uh, broken it's actually missing off that side um, the rubbers are missing off the um, cassette bits all that one's there that one's missing. To be honest, they don't matter that much. If the front loading system is properly adjusted, then you can get away with not having them, but there is always that risk that they will um, leave a mark on certain cassettes uh, when you push the cassette in. But uh, if it's properly adjusted, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, so. That's fair enough, a screw missing there. Um, let's have a look at the deck itself. I've not actually looked. Oh, why am I using the camera to actually look at where I'm putting the screwdriver? There we go. Ooh, yes, 
That looks quite nice. Uh, Where wise that looks really very good insofar as there is not much wear. Um, not from a smoking family by the look of it. Very, very clean, no browning. Um, controller looks pretty good. As long as the bearings are fine, that should be okay with a clean. And it's got this lovely lasso, <laughs> as I call it. Um, still perfectly intact, so it's not being played about with. I mean, and the smell. The smell is great. It smells of just 1980s electronics. I love the smell of these things, um, especially when they warm up. This is the later upper drum, um, which is a harder alloy and um, therefore doesn't wear the same. So let's see. I do this. Lots of screw then. I really shouldn't be doing this handheld, but let's see if the heads have been actually changed. Um, I would say those heads have been changed. They look like genuine Sony heads that have been replaced and a new upper drum. Wow. That is actually quite exceptional. Um, lovely to see. That's great. Now, <clears throat> the thing that's slightly interesting about this is that that's been done but they haven't fitted the reliability um, service items, which are the metal gears on the um, on the front loading system, and the uprated or second generation, I suppose you'd say. Um, DC DC AC converter, which I'll show you. Oh, I just got the screw, um, which I'll show you in a second. So, let's put that one in. Okay, so let's put this back. And if we look here, there's a DC DC AC um, converter, this metal can here. Now, these are troublesome. They overheat, they're like little ovens. Um, and um, I have to say, in the majority of the cases, it's not so much the. Um, the uh, capacitors, although they do go um, high ESR or they leak or whatever, but uh, it's more to do with the, the actual little transformer that's in there. Um, and uh, apparently they used, um, as part of the process, an acid was used um, in the manufacture and it rots one of the legs and causes it to go open circuit. Now I have looked, I have actually taken apart one of those transformers with a, a view to rewinding it, but to be honest, I've actually resorted to using um, the XP um, voltage converters come regulators and just doing it that way. Um, 
because at the end of the day it provides what is it 45 volts something like that 33 volts for the tuner um and then 3.3 volts um ac which is used to um heat the heaters in the um vfd so at the end of the day i mean there's no um analog transmission anymore you'd be silly really to use an rf in um to record videos so do with with those voltages and just give it sort of i don't know five volts a um dc for one of those xp uh, modules um and we'll do a video on this another point and you're fine um slight downside is that if you're using ac it does actually keep the heaters in better condition the actual heater um wires across the vfd but i don't know i've seen i've seen other people use them i've seen a machine that's had them in for um quite a considerable time and the display still good and bright and fine so i don't really see a problem with doing it in a machine this age and um, it's just not very purist <laughs> it's just a bit wrong so uh mm. yeah we'll see so okay um so i suppose i'd love to think that the only thing that's wrong with this is this bar now my thinking is i have got a couple of metal gears which is great they're not in the best of condition but they do um and i probably have to amaldite them um to set them and get them to work as they should but i thought what i'd do was a bit of an experiment and maybe as something to revive i've got a few other c9s um, with issues um which all can be solved but i don't have any more gears as such um like i said I've got those two metal gears but they're, they're not the best the, the, the metals actually split where the screw goes in so what i'm thinking is using these gears now these gears a uh, <clears throat> fix for the loading um uh what would you say the loading spindle um on the later um 711b chassis uh, as used in the for example the hf100 where the the actual plastic gear on the bottom of the shaft that goes um goes from down here i mean relatively obviously this is a belted one and it's quite different goes down and goes down to the loading gear for the um the lacing and the gear splits so one fix is to use one of these gears to um basically replace it uh, glue it on and jobs are good and, but these gears are actually and i've tested this are actually perfect for the front loading system i don't know whether i can yeah there we go so the next thing um is to and get the front loading system out um a little bit more of a faff on the c9 but not not too bad big thing to remember and i'm one of the best for forgetting this every time i take one of these apart is this rod here um this actually locks the carriage down i think that's right locks the carriage down um when the basket's actually down at the, the bottom so you push the tape in takes it in this engages and uh, locks locks it locks it down and um, when you press eject this is pulled back to unlock it so you need to get this off 
and if you've got half decent nails you can just pick it off um, otherwise it could be a bit of a fiddle <laughs> um, and the next thing you can um, if you're feeling lazy you can actually not worry too much about this in fact what we'll do is undo the screws and then I'll show you ideally you want to be why do I always use a camera There are two more screws under here, and because this is somewhat broken, this is going to be interesting. Which way does it go? Yeah, not that way. So it's down. Right, so... So, um, yeah, so I don't know whether I can actually get this to drive. It seems pretty jammed, actually. Let's just see. It. There's a little, um, when you push the tape in, it pushes against two little uh, levers, which I'll show you when I take it out. Um, that basically sense when they're taking when the tape when there's a tape there so it can drive this motor um but i don't think um there's anything else on these i'm actually struggling to remember right. i've done a lot of these i think what's happened this is another common problem on these is when they fail when the basket comes right the way back it lands or it hits two bits of metal that stick out from these sections and the bit that actually hits those bits of metal that stick out are these that help sort of keep the the tape nice and sort of snug push down to the bottom of the basket and it pushes these up so you can pull the tape out so with these if you ever find that the tape's really hard to, to push in you know there's quite a lot of resistance it'll be because these um, aren't being pushed up properly by those two bits of metal I quite frequently find that the bits of metal that should be like that are actually bent back like this but what can happen is when this um, becomes out of alignment when this comes back up it'll actually twist around and it'll get trapped um, behind a piece of metal um, so I think that's what's happened is take the two screws out the top and doing this gives you a little bit of freedom to move things and screw on the side as well um, if I can't undo it I'm not going to worry too much but if you can it is coming out probably would have been better if I take the board out but hey ho it's actually not too bad Happy. Cross 
two of you. So I'm just, oh gosh, yeah, it's trapped. Thing is, I'm going to do it to get it out. to see now. What's going on? Yeah, I can see it's behind. Now it's not. <laughs> there you go. So that now. Yeah, that's driving. And gear will pop on. has gone back into where it's supposed to go. And let's wind it on enough. Oh, that's fine. I was going to say, that doesn't sound terribly healthy, but it is just because the bar, there's nothing on the end of the bar on the, the one side, so it's it's sort of chattering against the teeth because it's it's not correct okay now next thing undo the cables to the motor this you can just lift down There can be things pressing on the inside of the, the, the um, between the front and the P. Yeah, I'm just sort of really interested to see if this will work and whether I uh, I can get away with this, um, whether it's going to be reliable. But uh, the um, what I've done now with the front loading system is uh, I've the one gear the one it was already missing off, off uh, the side um, and once you take the bar off if you move the carriage to about as far as it will go before it starts making the descent down um, you can actually pull the sides out gently enough without bending anything to just about get the carriage to jump out of its um, its track so uh, as this is is broken and the gear, I don't know where the other gear's gone. It's probably long since gone. It's probably in the machine somewhere. I'm no doubt I'll find it when I service it. But um, I'm going to cheat and just take this out. And um, you can see there the gear and the way one part of it is is filled in thereby locking it onto the shaft. Um, and that's really where the problem comes in, especially as the plastic gets older, it just cracks. Um, there's a lot of pressure going through there, and especially if you put, if it does get stuck for any reason, um, then it's it's doomed to failure really. So uh, yeah, let's have a look and see what we can do. Okay, so uh, I've actually just tested the gear on the end it is actually a really good tight fit especially when it's pushed as far as it will go so the, the metal is right up to the end like so um taking the other gear off the old gear that was cracked so that, that's when i truly had it so the thing is now i'm going to mix some aldite now this is um aldite rapid um i don't know whether i made the right choice in using Aldite Rapid, um, especially as the quantities aren't right. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, oh pants. Trying to put that on. No, no, I'm not putting it on the right way. 
There we go. It's just a bit new. Hopefully that won't glue itself. And if I go like that, just mix this a little bit up. Good bit on that section where the cam is. Push it down. I want it to be flush. I don't want it sticking out. I have read reviews about this glue not actually being that wonderful. So um, I'm intrigued to see how well this will go. It's it's all a bit of an experiment. Um, and up a little bit higher so I can get that in. In an ideal world, I wouldn't do it like this. Um, I've taken a lot of these apart, right apart, uh, completely apart, rebuilt them. Oh, I wonder if that's going to be long enough. Alright, so that's on. Yeah, so in an ideal world I'd take this right apart. And, um... Yeah, just... Just do it um, stripped down, um, and I may well still do that <laughs> uh, if I find I have to start um, putting this apart again, or the glue doesn't set, or things get horribly wrong, or I don't know, anything could happen I suppose. Um, but I don't know, it's sort of fun to do it this way. Um, what's the worst that can happen, So I would say? So this is interesting stuff, I suppose. Do a little bit uh, fly by the seat of your pants. And the other thing I'm slightly worried about is if there's going to be enough coverage, because it is so tight. which I don't think I have. It won't run properly. Um, it will always be slightly out of alignment. Actually, that is now spot on. So yeah, so these need to be running true with the cogs sort of running in a straight line, straight top cog, top tooth rather, running in line with the bar and then top tooth again. If that's even slightly out, it, it's just not quite right. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. 10 minutes later, it's actually a bit more than that, but I checked it after about sort of five, six minutes. And this um, Emeldite is fully hardened, uh, looking good. So the next thing is to carefully put this back together. So um, obviously the way I've taken this apart, You've got to watch these um, white bits here, here, and down there are uh, on both sides. On this side, uh, a couple of them are metal. And uh, all of those can actually slide off the, the little uh, pole that they're on. So you've got to be very careful that they don't go missing because if they do, the, um, the basket's going to rattle about 
be free, not be true. So, yeah, just be careful of that. So, uh, yeah, let's go and put this back together. Okay, so... Let's move that out of the way now. I've had to pick a minute. Let's put that out of the way for the minute. Don't need that. So... What's interesting is originally the front flat would have had a bit of protective plastic on it. The bit of that was still left on the top, so that's, that's quite nice. Completely come off, which is good. So I'm going to carefully just manipulate this back in, and ideally I want it to roughly the top at the highest position before it drops, before the basket drops. And do the same on this side. And that looks, that actually looks slightly out. So I'm just going to move this one tooth up. I don't know, to my eye, that still looks a little bit out. That looks perfect. Super. Okay. So, put the top back on. I will replace this tape. As you can see, it's sort of, it's quite warm today as well, which doesn't sort of help its cause much, but... Uh, Yeah, that's looking good. So what I'll do, once I get this back together, I will check just to make sure that um, everything is, nothing's bent, I haven't sort of strained or lost anything in putting it all apart. Uh, I need to turn it over to do that though, so let's, let's get the screws in. So if I turn it over, it'll probably all just fall apart again. Oh, dropped one. Seems a bit long. Oh, I don't know, I think they're about right. It's the worst that can happen. It's one of my favourite saying at the moment. What's the worst that can happen? Now, the other thing I will do is scrape off the foam, the old foam. It's pretty much just adhesive now with a tiny bit like the remnants of the foam. So uh, we'll get that off as well. Get the tape off, give it a little wipe over, put it with isopropyl. Okay, so I've given that a fairly good clean. Um, next thing is to put this back on. Um, I should have mentioned that when I'm cleaning them, I tend not to put it on. I'm just tighten it all up, clean it up first. And... Um, I'll put this on afterwards because I have a nasty habit of stretching the spring by mistake, catching the cloth in it or something daft. So that's it. Um, now the other thing I was slightly concerned about Was this gear that come out? Oh, I haven't got it in the. I haven't got it in the thing properly. That's okay. Zero. So there's a little arm that moves this the whole basket, and in my haste, I didn't check that it was in there. I wasn't getting anywhere fast. I'm just gonna carefully just feel it in really. It's it's you're not stretch stressing anything. Um it's just sort of lining it up and allowing the little peg to click in. There we go, that's looking better. Just wondering why nothing was moving. I 
just sort of helping it a little bit by putting just a tiny bit of pressure on the gear that the the motor drives. Um, you can, if you really want to, you can re release the motor, but um, it's a bit of a faff. What sort of bee coming? Oh, got my finger stuck. So hopefully, oh, doing the wrong bit. sort of towards the end it does get a little bit more difficult uh, there we go it's raising the little metal bits that one needs straightening i'll do that yeah that's worked that's looking good so uh straighten those again how i have done it in the past strip the whole lot down while I'm in there, I just uh, straighten it, but you can, if you've got this type of uh, needle type pliers, needle news. There are actually little places on the, it's where the little rubber goes around, where you can just put this on and just straighten it. Um, it's not critical really. Um, I've never found it to be critical. Um, and the flap's looking good as well. The flap will try and come forward um, until it's up against this. It will try and come forward. So, uh, yeah, so you do have to, before you get it this far, you need to make sure that flaps up when you pull it back. Otherwise, um, it will come be poking out the front here and you can't you can't get it past this without pushing it back in so that's a pain uh the other thing that's really cool on these of course is that is the door the little door that slides up um should be locked when it's in full eject um, i will clean that even though nobody will see it oh no it's um not being cleaned and that bothers me um, sometimes on these, they actually run on rails, and um, you can see the rail there, and sometimes the rails can cause problems. There are actually um, two screws, and you can adjust this rail on this side to make sure that it's true, and that the door will run properly. So, yeah, um, I can actually see there's a little bit of bending that's gone on there. So I don't know whether I did that, may well have, but yeah, straighten it back, back out a little bit. Yeah, that's looking fine. So there's the bottom of the rail there. This one's actually, um, poppered so you can't adjust that it's only this side but that's enough um again I've, i have seen it where the door's fallen out as well because this has become too loose or it's been distorted or somebody hasn't uh, tightened up the screws properly so that's another common one what lifts the door are these these bits of mechanism here i can see better this side here and it's actually actuated, you can see it. If I do that, you can see the, the see the door trying to come up. There. Um, they're actually actuated by, as the basket goes down, hits there, pushes it up. So the tape's well and truly in before it starts pushing the, the, the door up. But 
yeah, so the next thing now, um, I'll continue to give it another bit of a clean and then uh, we'll stick it back in the machine and see how it works. So I've now put the front loading system back in and I have to confess I have tested it. And it seems that the actual broken gear, um, or broken gears probably wasn't the problem because I can only get the tape to load if I do it manually. It's not picking up two uh, underneath here. There's two little um, sliders. When you push the tape in, it slides and actuates two little micro switches. Both micro switches are actu actuating. I can hear them. I haven't tested them yet. So what I'm going to do, um, well, let's just turn it on and see what happens. It just ejects the tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here and I'll do another video on diagnosing why it's not actually loading. Um, like I say, everything seems fine. Everything seems to be driving fine. I'm more than happy with the mechanical repair of those two gears. Uh, we've just got to find out why it isn't loading. So, uh, yeah, I shall see you in the next video.